What's going on, everyone? This is Sheets, and this is probably one of my favorite uh, videos that I like to do every week. And it is going to involve uh, constructing lineups using SaberSim, uh, specifically to attempt to win the 100,000 uh, in, in the big UFC GPP. And it's it's intended to show you guys different ways to make use of these, you know, these magnificent tools that are available to you. Um, as you know, I'd like to separate the DFS content into one video, which we discuss what the best plays are, and then a completely separate video, uh, this one, where we just go over how to actually build the lineups and different settings you can use and different approaches you could use. I don't encourage you to do exactly what I'm doing now. I'm just giving you some food for thought of, of how you might want to use these these tools. Um, and yes, we are going to be directing it towards this slate. Um, but the hope is that you, I don't know, maybe your brain is, is jarred a little bit, but you think about uh, different ways to build lineups using this pretty incredible technology, actually. So... Uh, first of all, I, I, there are a couple of fights I need to kind of deal with on a fundamental level, the most important of which being this uh, Andre Petrosky versus Dylan Budka fight. Excuse me. And the reason I mention it is Budka came in on the scales today and looked like he was going to pass out. I mean, he almost fell off the scale. And while they did say that the fight was on, uh, it does carry with it quite a bit of risk. Um, this fight, in my opinion, I mean, could be canceled any time uh, up until and and after lock. So this fight, if you play it, does carry an extraordinary amount of risk. Um, now, what that could mean is that it'll be lower owned as a result because people are going to be are going to notice that <laughs> people notice what I, what I noticed with the weigh in and people are going to come to that same conclusion that this fight could possibly be canceled after lock, which will make it lower owned than it otherwise would have. Um, so you're going to have to decide what to do with that. I mean, if you were really, you know, kind of psycho random walk type you know, analysis, like I am, I would probably conclude that that, type of thing is already priced into the line uh, and and priced into the projection and priced into the projected ownership. But between you, me and the wall, it, it, it just isn't. Okay. Um, the ownership that I'm using uh, is, is probably too, I don't know. It's probably still too big and I don't know where to, where to reduce it to. Like I see Butka with twenty percent ownership, there's just no way. I mean, and even if I, you know, manually reduce this, we're we're just really, really guessing as to what what the people are going to do with this possible, um, with this possible uh, what you call it, uh, uh, cancellation risk. So that is one thing that you might consider doing. Actually, is is if you are going to use Sabres and, uh, and, and you know and put your own ownership projections in, I would probably, I would probably reduce it uh, by by some degree uh, for both these fighters. Now, again, you might be thinking, well, are the, my sites that I fo follow and pay going to do this for me? You you would hope, but but you know it's football season <laughs> and the sites do not uh, really uh, you know focus 100% of their energy on on making subtle adjustments in ownership projections uh for the MMA card like some of the you know if you if you go to some sites you'll you'll see the, the exact same projections as they were yesterday and the day before and that's just the way it is with MMA um, it's not like basketball and baseball and football where they update constantly. Uh, MMA is just not as big of a sport, so they are not always rerunning these things. So I do think that that whatever ownership that you'll see, it's probably going to be a little high on this fight. So you might, again, want to, to reduce it a little bit. 
Um, I did not for the purposes of this video, um, but I think that you could rerun this and be well within your rights to reduce the ownership. Now, how is that going to impact your line of construction? Well, in a couple of ways. Number one is if you opt to not use the Sims and use one of the Saber Sim, Saber Score type ranking systems, it's going to uh, imp it's going to affect how it calculates you know, the oh the ownership. Okay, um, it, all these calculations involve some function of ownership, and if you know if you do reduce this, it's going to obviously impact that, um, and. Uh, if you do geo mean filtering, which you might want to do again, that it's good when you're intentionally telling the system to play low own lineups, then it's going to affect that too. So that's the importance of, 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 of making that adjustment as far as the ownership goes in, in this particular fight. So I'll leave you to that. So the first thing I did was I did run uh, 5,000 lineups here. And the, the first thing that we, again, we do is see, what what we have okay when i say what we have i don't care what fighters we have i want to see what it's how it's ranking these lineups you know we built five thousand, and we i ran this when i was whatever and the other thing you'll see that i created groups and we're going to get back to this in a minute we're not we're not doing this yet that's going to be the second part of this video which is going to be much longer than it usually is by the way um but um, it's currently ranking these 5,000 lineups and you'll see, hold on, build settings. Yeah, so I built 5,000 lineups, 150 max setting, minimum salary, 47.5, max salary, 50,000. And right now it's rate, it's it's ranking them by MMA default. And and to remind us what that is, um, we, we get into the Saber score MMA default. We click on the eyeglass and you'll see the formula, which what it does is it, it adds a nine, you know, a certain function or a certain percentage of the 99th percentile outcome of the lineup, which is a pretty big deal. And it doesn't really ding it for ownership all that much, but which is fine, you know, because as long as it's going to to, to put out a 99th percentile outcome, I think it's a pretty good um good rank. You know, it's a good, it's a good system to to create some good high high upside lineups that are not going to be that highly owned. Um, so, I mean, if you want, you know, rock the house, you know, you know, play the MMA default, throw in the 150. And and that's certainly not, not, I mean, not the worst idea in the world, but, but let's, let's, let's give you some other, some other thoughts here. Another way you could rank these is by, uh, the other Sabre score main metric, and that is the Sim Diversity 10. Now, when you click on the eyeball with that, uh, this one is much less aggressive, okay? Because it does not have that 99th percentile outcome as a function, it, as, as a, uh, it's not, not function, as a, as a denominator. I don't know how else to describe this, but it's just using the sum of my projections. And then the it is dinging it, 0.2 times the average ownership, but it's not exactly prioritizing upside because it's not making that 99th percentile outcome. So this is going to be much less aggressive, but probably much more likely to be the optimal, like these types of lineups in Sim Diversity 10. So, you know, you could, if you re-rate these by Sim Diversity 10, now, now we have a portfolio of okay upside lineups, but they're just not quite as aggressive and much less likely to, you know, to take down the whole pie. Okay. These are going to end up being probably pretty highly duped because again, it did not prioritize 99th percentile outcomes. It prioritized, uh, you know, some of my projections, for example. So, um, for the purposes of the 150, what I, what I'm thinking of doing you really don't really want to use the MMA Sim Diversity 10. That's 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 the way I play. You want to start with one of these highly aggressive ra rankings like MMA Default, which we kind of looked at before. Now, the other thing you could do is you could create your own uh, metric. And like what I did, for example, is, is I created this thing called Sheets Default. And what that is, if we get into it, is it looks kind of the same 
as the MMA default, except it also dinged at 0.5 times some of adjusted ownership. So this is is probably super cuckoo, okay? Like if you really wanted to get nuts, you create a lineup or you create a metric like this. And what I promise you is, is these types of lineups, if you ever looked at them, you, you really would never want to play them, okay? Which is kind of okay for, for a 12 fight card that where you want to try to, you know, if your, your goal is to kind of win the whole thing. So what you're going to want to do is, is take some amounts of the, of the highly aggressive lineups and some amount of the kind of, you know, not as aggressive lineups, maybe, or just go full on bore with the aggressive approach. Okay. And I like to, to assign a certain amount of lineups to this, you know, to those heavy duty aggressive rankings. And then I'd leave some to play around with, you know, guys I like for what, for lack of a better description. Um, and that's not exactly the most unbiased way to play, but that that's, that's what I like to do. But what I will do with that set is I will then also apply probably some of these um, advanced, you know, aggressive uh, metrics, okay? The one thing that you will not see me doing too much, if at all, in uh, MMA is doing geo mean filtering, meaning just forcing in low-owned plays or low-owned lineups as like kind of a, they're, they're, the, they're the product of their ownership, because what I find is that all that really does for you is it just ends up jamming the lowest known play, you know? And if someone like, like for like today, uh, this Malat, not Malat, whatever his name is, Brandon something, the guy who's a minus a plus 1700 against Dolgarian. If we try to set a geo mean filtering thing, all it's going to end up doing is end up getting us like 30% of that guy. Okay. We, and that's really not what we're trying to accomplish here. What we, I think what I prefer is to use those, you know, those 99th percentile outcome filters as opposed to just completely just, just, just punting the ownership number. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to do that. The other thing that, again, I, I don't like doing in MMA is actually using the contest sims and, and, and the reason why, and I'm, I'm, fully immersed in, in using contest centers for most of the sports. The problem is, is that when you use the contest sim, so much of your success is going to depend on whether you assign a, a good contest field. And the, the issue with that is that MMA has so many lineups and so many players that are playing 150 that are trying their darndest to get unique that they're leaving money on the table. They're, 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 they're jamming in all kinds of stupid stuff like I'm going to be doing and to predict exactly what people are going to do in that vein is extraordinarily difficult. So, so to be able to build a pretty an accurate contest field, which not only captures the correct ownership of the fighters, but almost more important, the combinations of the fighters that they're going to be used um, it's extraordinarily difficult. So I feel as though that you give up more by, by relying on that than you gain. Um, so in MMA, until I can figure out myself how to create a good contest field, uh, I, listen, I could use Saber Sims. It's going to be based on their estimate of what the ownership is going to be pretty much. But I think for MMA, it's not that simple. Uh, I think you have to... Uh, if you're going to build a contest field for MMA, you have to take into account that people are going to be doing some funky shit. <laughs> to, that's kind of an analytical term. But you don't know exactly what that's going to be. So it's going to be very, very difficult to do. Um, so let's say, for example, I don't know. We want to play. Hmm, how many do we want to play? Let's say that we want to play 50 of these kind of high wild upside lineups. There's a couple of ways you could do it. You could go just 
play an old 50, okay? Um, or 50 of say sheets default, which that's my custom metric. It's going to be the, you know, the, the high, most aggressive. Or you could go 25 sheets default and 25 MMA default. When I say sheets default, whatever you want to make that, okay? But come up with something good, you know, make it, make it aggressive. Um, and then what I would do is, is, is probably put it in this favorites cat, uh, folder. I have my own, um, macro where I can tell if I'm like putting a lineup in twice, but in the absence of that, I mean, this favorites call this favorites folder does a pretty good job. So let's just say that if we want to come up with 50, let's first do like 25 of the sheets default ones. And then what we'll do is we'll put those into the favorites. And then what we'll do is we'll use the MMA default ones. And we'll and we'll put those 25 in. And we'll see if we're getting 50 completely different lineups. So we put that into favorites. And yeah, so we actually do have 50. So neat, none of those, you know, 50 lineups or like, like the 25 on their sheets default. None of those are duped in the 25 MMA in MMA default, which is great. So you have this portfolio of 50. And, and then what you can do is then decide what you want to do with the 100. Sometimes I will say, you know what? I don't have strong opinions on these fights. So I'm going to just go all 150, something like this, or maybe 100 at, with this, okay? Um, or maybe 75. And so you assign a certain amount in your in your head of you know what you like. So I happen to have some opinions on this fight. So, uh, so on this card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build like a bunch of lineups that that reflect those opinions. And I'm not going to just you know blindly play them. I'm going to have the Saber Sim tools assist me in building the highest upside lineups given those opinions. So, it, as as you might remember, um, when I was going over these fights, I identified four key fights um, that I thought were going to deliver. And that would be the Peak fight, the Garcia fight, the Fletcher fight, and the main event. And so what I did is I created groups within SaberSim where you could, um, where you would have at least, or not at least, you would have exactly one fighter from each of these four fights or whichever ones that you want. So, what I wanted to try to do is run lineups with those rules and then come up with the extra hundred. Now, it, I don't want the chalkiest of those. So what I'm going to have to do is I want to rerun these. We'll start off again. We'll, we'll try to build 5,000, but we're not going to be able to build 5,000. We'll build let's do a min salary of 47.5 so we don't get all the stupidest stupidest stuff um and let's let's see how many we get if we can run actually probably won't get 5000 if we have if we have a minimum of you know if we're using that fight pool. let's see how many we do get actually so let's see how many do you think we get we can't get 5000 right so it looks so 907 so not well, how fast was that? So nine hundred and seven total lineups. If you pick one from all four of those fights, those are all the combinations. Um, so th there's a couple of things you could do from this from this point. Is you know number one, you could um re rank these by one of those big metrics, right? So like for example you go straight by sheets default, okay? And then what you'll end up getting, but you, you might end up getting maybe too much of one guy. And you could check that if you wanted to. Like here, you'd be getting 96% of Kyle Nelson, which is probably not what you wanted, okay? Now, that's not to say that it, you shouldn't do it, but it's probably not what you wanted out of these 100, okay? You'd end up getting none like zero Steve Garcia pretty much. Okay. Uh, which is, which is definitely not what, not what you want to do. Um, so you could, you could set caps on how many of those that you could do. The other thing you could do from this point is 
also just kind of X out the fighters that you don't want. Okay. And I talked about that in my, in my, you know, in my, in my preview video, um, there are certain guys I like, some I don't. So I uh, like, I don't want to play any Brandon Rott. Didn't want to play, really didn't want to play any Dylan Budka. At the time, I didn't want to play Matt Schnell, but I, I just don't think I can X him out. Didn't want to play any Vanessa Demopoulos. I didn't want to play Yitza. Yitza. Um, and I didn't want to play Natalia Silva. I just, I just thought if she wins, it was wasn't going to score very well. And what else did I not want to play? And that was pretty much it. So we could apply that so we can X all those out. And then we could just go ahead and pile this in. But again, we're still at this 92% Kyle Nelson thing. But what this is doing is, 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 is using our takes. Okay. But then only giving us the lineups that, um, that, uh, have the most upside okay and now you'll see that when i go to min uniques two it doesn't even let me build that many okay um so we have to stick with min uniques one and we'd end up with you know like i said like a really really big amount of of kyle nelson so what you could do if you're not comfortable with that is you could you know use this setting you can go maximum exposure to say I don't know, 70%. Remember, we're only playing 100 lineups, so even if you get in all all of them, it, it probably puts you at under 50% total, which is which is fine. So you let's let's say you put maximum 65% for like for all players. And then we could we could run this again. We'll run this again with all those other fighters X'd out. Maximum of 65%, and, and this is what we end up getting, okay? Um, and now now you get more Garcia, and you also get... Um, but it ran it with these guys we didn't want to play, so that was a mistake. So let's uh, X out Yitza again. We'll X out... Who else do we want to X out? We, you want to X out Petrosky, you know, just in case that fight doesn't go? Probably not. Uh, Lima, Demopolis, Silva. We we wanted just we wanted to get rid of all these and Fletcher. Okay, not Fletcher. I'm sorry. I meant um. Did I say Fletcher the first time. I meant uh, Silva. Hope I got that right. So let's apply this. Good. And so we end up with only the fighters that we want, okay? Um, and this is this is pretty good, you know. Um, we only want to get a hundred because we played fifty of the others, so we'll re reduce that over there. And. We're rating them by MMA default, so let's 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 get a little greedier. How about we go to sheets default? It's a little bit more aggressive, okay. Um, and so now what we've done is we've built, you know, a hundred lineups with our takes, but we've used our um, what you call it? We've used our. Uh, our metrics here to give us high upside lineups. Now, again, normally I wouldn't even look to see who we have, I mean, honestly. Um, but this is what we would end up having. And this could scare you a little bit. Like I probably would want more Gabriel Santos, but I'm not, I can't be worried too much about that because we've already, we've already factored that into our, analysis here i mean if we really wanted to get more santos we'd end up you know what we would say well why why am i still getting bootka by the way so again this does require you to, to fact check yourself you know we don't want no marat right we don't want we said we didn't want any of these guys right so well, why is it still giving it to us um 
All right, this is better. No Yitza, no Demopolis, no Silva, no Budka, no Marat, no Lima. And we're getting a very, you know, uncomfortably low amount of Santos um, and Rong Zhu and Dolgarian for that matter. But, you know, we we the reason why we did that is because we were playing with these groups. Okay. So if we didn't want to do that, if we didn't want to be that reliant on, on these groups, what we could do is instead play like 50 lineups grouping this stuff. Okay. And we'll put those in, for example. And then what we'll do is we will uncheck the groups. Or, you know, what we could do, we could uncheck the main event one because that, that could be fun, right? Let's, we could, we could do somewhere we fade the main event and then we'll run this again. For example. Um, so we still have those big key groups, but it doesn't require that we have the main event. Um, so let's say we play 25 of those. All right, so let's add these to the to the pile. And then the last thing maybe you'll want to do is take out the groups and just run some with the guys that we like, but without forcing in the group. But again, it's important that you still, because we're playing the guys that we like, it's probably going to be somewhat chalky, so you want to get as nasty, right, as possible, you know? Um, we didn't particularly like Schnell here, so this one we could probably get rid of. Well, we're only playing 25 of this, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, and again, I, I don't know if I want to intentionally just kind of, you know, look to see who we have or but I don't think Schnell was actually a uh, a big priority here as, as someone that I actually quote unquote liked. So this is what 25. Now let's put this in. And so we now we have our 150. So again, it's important to see like what we've done here. We we've the most important thing we've done is what regardless of what we liked and what we played, we always checked it with this kind of this 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 sorting, okay, this sorting metric, and depending on how you you formulate that, you're going to that's going to determine what happens. Now again, I don't really know what my overall exposure is to any fighter. I mean, I could tell you that probably pretty heavy on the ones that I grouped in those, you know, in the in the in those last hundred, but overall, I mean, we're just kind of cool whatever it is with these uh with these 150 and whatever that is and we'll just um we'll just plug those into the throwdown and you'll see that Sabersim has been very very fishy about uh about the saving mechanism and the entry editor hopefully that changes over the next day or so but that is what I'm, I'm kind of advising uh, as an approach to play these, you know, these big lottery contests on this particular slate. You know, um, you can go with your projections and you can go with who you like, but make sure that you are following these rules to get yourself max upside. So still says saving. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's what. So we'll probably just, manually download those now while we're here i do i listen i may as well go over kind of like my top plays um and build lineups in like my bigger buy-ins i think for those i actually might um I think I am going to run the Sims because those, I think that we could kind of accurately 
predict what what the people are going to do. It's not like trying to predict what they're going to do in these in these big lotteries. So let's first save. Let's first save uh, lineups here. And I don't know what's going on with 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 their um, with their um, entry editor, but I think I'm kind of content with at least cutting pasting the 150. So just to kind of show you again what what running the Sims is going to look like on this particular card. Let's go here and we will, it's already put in here, right? So what we can probably do is just go ahead and run the Sims kind of right from, right from the word go here. So let's hit run contest Sim. Ooh, except, uh, okay. I did not set the groups, which is fine. So let's just see what that looks like. So let's say I was going to look at the, say, the knockout special. You'd sort by risk adjusted ROI and probably just put in, you know, your top lineup or something like that. But I do want to make sure that I did not, I was not running the group. So I would, I did not. So I, again, I, I do trust the Sims for this type of contest. So um, I don't mind just go ahead, you know, putting in whatever, whatever I get, except we have this, entry editor issue where it's it's not saving okay so again we'd have to just you know manually download all this stuff so save this to the csv and then just kind of manually put it in which is a little which is which is a little annoying i have to say um but uh i want to save something to these uh contests and then i want to go back just for just for fun and kind of just hand build stuff and just remind you guys of who i liked here um not upside upload lineups entry editor i mean edit entries Yeah, so I don't know what's going on with their entry editor right now, but definitely makes it a little bit annoying. Uh well, let's 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 do it this way. I want to start with this with this. Again, I don't really want to get into which goes where, like for now. We could put the one that's in the 555 into the 100 also. Why not? Okay. And save, and we'll put this in. Okay. So if we are going to now go back and hand build these, all right, for example, let's kind of review... Just for just again, uh, who who we actually like here? So we're gonna go. How do I how do I find exactly what I want? So upcoming five fifty five EPL for next week. I don't know why I have that saved already. So this is what I saved for now. But okay. So again, I do think that someone from that peak fight should be fro should be played. Uh, so what you could do is if you like peak, you just just you put you put this in. I think Fletcher, both these, both of them actually. I mean, honestly, guys, I, I would just do what I said earlier in the week is just take somebody from these four key fights. You go, I don't know, let's just even random Burns put Garcia here. Burns here. We'll put Burns in here. And then what was the fourth fight? The um, that Fletcher fight. We'll put him in here, and, and you play these four. I mean, then this just builds itself. Like for example, and you don't have to play these exact four. Wh whatever combination you want, you know, you pick any of these, and then 
I mean, you could even, if you wanted to, you know, you could play Dolgarian. You know, because there are seventy five hundred dollar fighters you could play, like uh like Padilla Padilla is not bad, you know, Andraj is not bad, you know, all these guys are not bad. So you could go play that, or you could play maybe you you're not too thrilled that you didn't get as much Santos, so you so you could get some of that. Problem there is that you really can't fill out your lineup, you know, because you don't really want to play Lima. You already have the Ashmoose fight, so there's nobody there. You could play DeSantos, but you're leaving 900 on the table pretty much for no reason. So um, the Santos doesn't make a lot of sense. But in this particular combination, you could go all the way up. You go play play Amarim. And then, uh, well, even still, even that, probably a little bit, you know, you're probably wasting some equity somewhere. You could go all the way up to... Petrowski, maybe a low on Petrowski, but then even still, you know, you already have this fight. Now you could probably get away with 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 Dos Santos here if you want to do that. But if you can do that, oh, you can get up to Durden this way. I guess I would say you could even play Dolgarian if you're gonna do that. But let's just say your opinion is that, oh, you know what? I'd rather play all the favorites here. I mean, let, let me go play Burn instead of Burns, let me go play Brady. Certainly nothing wrong with that, right? You got the favorites in all four key fights, and now it, it's you, you kind of force your hand in kind of a good way. Now you can go ahead and do this. You could play like Santos with one of these underdogs, you know, if you like. Um, so the hand building stuff is easy um, for the big buyers, but it's the... Uh, Try to win that 100000 which is the most interesting part of this whole equation. Uh, I hope I helped you guys with that a little bit. Gave you some guys th some things to think about. And if I remember, I, I'll remember. I'll do a betting breakdown as well. Uh, I'll see you guys later.